from your sperm developing two heads, to running out of drinking water, genetically engineered super viruses, nuclear war, and trillions of jellyfish, the next hundred years really aren't looking good for humanity. And here's just a few of the reasons the world population will plummet by 80% over the next century. Beginning with the growing crisis of fertility rates. You see, sperm counts in men across the world have dropped by over 50% in just 50 years, from an average of over 100 million per milliliter to just 49 million. And now for context, anything under 50 million makes conception incredibly difficult. And with this decline speeding up minus 2% every single year, more and more men risk infertility. Now BPA and other plastics have been shown to massively interfere with hormone levels during pregnancy, which often leads to low testosterone and deformed sperms. This is why for the first time in history, our sperm is now having deformities like two tails or the wrong amount of heads, making your own sperm unable to function properly. Which is why over the next few decades, you're going to see more and more of your friends and family unable to ever have a child of their own. By 2025, average sperm counts will have slipped below the healthy minimum. And then as this trend continues, they'll have reached zero by 2049. This crisis is going to get much worse than the run-up to 2030, which feeds directly into the next massive problem humanity faces, the collapse of the traditional family structure. Now, regardless of whether it's a symptom of societal progression or moral degradation, it's a fact that couples are having children much later on in life. Because in Western society, we're now placing careers, power, success, and money over happy family units. And that's why the worldwide average of how many children a woman will have has now dropped significantly in just the past half century, from over 5 to just 2.4, and in many western countries, most women aren't even having kids anymore. Japan, the UK, America all face population collapse. Because as countries get richer, this problem just becomes worse and worse. Singapore, for example, has a birth rate of just 1.3 on average, not nearly enough to sustain its population. By 2030, there will be over a million less children in the UK and over a million more pensioners, and the consequences for these countries is a much heavier burden on young people to support the old, which just pushes the birth rate even lower as a result. Over the 2030s, the damage this has done will be plain to see. People cite education and contraception as the root cause of this, but this really isn't the full picture at all, and this leads on to one of the main problems that Generation Z faces. You see, nearly 30% of young men, young men who have had their testosterone and sperm destroyed, haven't even had relations with a woman since they turned 18, triple what it was just 10 years ago. These hollow digital replacements for real human contact are partly to blame, as they are physically changing the brains of Generation Z and helps sweeten the better pill of loneliness for a long time. But this is just the start. With ChatGPT and AI on the rise, new AI girlfriends and boyfriends will be the next level of this, as how could real people hope to compete with design perfection? But online dating is also a massive factor. Today's young men have to compete with thousands of others now. Instead of just competing with the six other men in your tribe, you've now got to compete with thousands of people all who are desperate for any woman they can get, leading to an ever-increasing inequality in the dating marketplace, where 80% of the women only want to date 20% of the men. I mean, at the rates we're seeing today, it's no exaggeration to say that half of all young men will be out of the dating pool by around 2040, with the incel population growing immeasurably. And this is because with our societal progression, people are being taught that bringing up a children is just a burden, and that sex is just something to be casual. But these changes in dating and the decline in the family are just one part of the puzzle here. Instead, the true population decline will come from catastrophic disasters and new dark technologies. The 2040s and beyond will be when our advanced technology truly gets dangerous. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global men's lifestyle brand that's disrupting the men's grooming market. Manscaped is trusted by more than 8 million men worldwide for their trimmers, liquid formulations, and premium boxes. And their performance package 4.0 is a game changer when it comes to creating the ultimate men's grooming and hygiene bundle. First to highlight is the Lawn Mower 4.0. Their fourth generation electric trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade designed to reduce grooming accidents and has a 4000 LED spotlight for when you need a more precise shave. You thought that was good, but want to take your grooming game to the next level? The performance package 4.0 also includes the new Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear hair trimmer. The Weed Whacker 2.0 uses a powerful 7000 RPM motor and upgraded cutting edge performance for their first generation Weed Whacker to better whack your weeds. The Weed Whacker 2.0 is cordless, rechargeable, and has a battery with up to 45 minutes of runtime. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performer Package 4.0, the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxes and the Shed Travel Bag. So go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use promo code MOON at checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping with promo code MOON at manscaped.com.
developments in AI are uncovering some disturbing possibilities. Ray Kurzweil, Google's director of engineering, predicts that we're going to reach AI singularity by 2045. But what does that even mean? Well, as AI improves, it will quickly reach human levels of intelligence and then beyond. But if an AI gains sentience and the ability to continually improve on its own code, it will eventually create a loop of accelerating intelligence that will catapult it far past our levels of understanding. And at that point, it's impossible to predict what AI will do next. And that's why Google's recent study with Oxford University now states that there's a 10% chance AI will wipe out humanity. And these are the people who are creating it saying this. A super intelligent AI is incredibly likely to see us as an existential threat, seeking to wipe humans from the face of the earth before we can ever turn it off. Nietzsche foresaw this when he talked about the concept of the Ubermensch, where he argued that the Ubermensch, or in other words AI, is where morality ultimately leads. AI is the pinnacle of morality, not humanity, as AI serves as a moral standard and a source of law for humans. But as Nietzsche also argued and thus spoke Zarathustra, AI also lacks what makes you human in the first place. For Nietzsche, people are defined by a relationship between order and chaos, and AI would be entirely governed by order. But without the chaos of desire, emotion, and impulse, it would never be inhibited, which is why it will inevitably overtake humanity. And so to stop this one-dimensional threat of AI, we need to have much stricter controls on its developments before it's too late. It will be in the 2050s or possibly earlier that a sentient AI capable of ending civilization could be created. But you see, the threat of AI wiping out humanity is just a 10% chance here. The real threat from AI comes from how society would deal with how many of us it's going to replace in the future. Just like in the Industrial Revolution, the displacement of millions of people from their livelihoods will cause massive social upheavals. You see, it was the Industrial Revolution that led to the rise of extremist ideologies and the subsequent world wars. And the AI revolution is just going to be so much larger. Whole industries will be made obsolete. Once their jobs are perfected by AI. Jobs like drivers, bankers, doctors, lawyers, pushing hundreds of millions to billions into unemployment by 2050. And once that hits society, the resulting ideological extremism and wars will be far larger and more destructive than anything we've ever seen before. But humans don't just need to worry about what's happening in the future. The way that we abuse our own natural resources today is going to cost us dearly. You see, while most types of poverty have gotten significantly better over the past century, water shortages are expected to significantly worsen. By 2050, the latest UN prediction states that over 5 billion people will face severe water shortages. And it'll only get so much worse from there. Fresh water levels simply can't keep up with increased demand. Without the continued development of innovations in converting seawater or other solutions into pure water, countries like Brazil and India in particular will be dealing with perpetual droughts. This in turn would devastate crop yields, causing massive famines and significant reductions in population. Not to mention global wars surrounding this issue. That's why the massive droughts that we're seeing today will be nothing compared to what's going to happen in the 2060s and beyond. And you see, it's not just fresh water we need to worry about. The oceans are going to be significantly changing over the next century, as human waste is making them more acidic, the oxygen levels are changing, and the nature is being infested with plastics. All of this plus massive increases in fishing has decimated our ocean ecosystems, leaving the door open to other forms of life like jellyfish. Now jellyfish aren't as affected by pollution. In fact, they're now starting to thrive as we remove their main predators. And by 2080, they may be all that's left in the ocean. Studies now predict that our abuse of the oceans is going to leave 70% of them without enough oxygen to sustain fish populations, making the famines we're already predicting even worse. And so if we ruin the planet and wipe ourselves out, the jellyfish will be one of the main things left to inherit the earth. And as crazy as this sounds, it's predicted that by 2070, real fish will have become a luxury product, only affordable for the top 1%, the rest of us being left with nothing but jellyfish. What these giant corporations are doing to the planet right now is going to affect every aspect of nature, not just the oceans. And we're already starting to see the destabilizing effects it's having. Recent natural disasters like floods and wildfires have been getting so much more common because of how quickly the climate is changing. And this is disrupting weather patterns, making some of the world hotter and drier whilst having the opposite effect in other parts of the world. And these kinds of disasters cost the US alone nearly $150 billion, twice what it was just a year before. And the result is that the world will be assaulted by disaster after disaster, which just compounds to make everything that we've already spoken about even more hard to deal with. It's predicted that by 2080, extreme weather events will be happening at least four times as much as today. And today, they're already an everyday occurrence. Which is why it's possible that giant cities like London and Miami may be wiped out in the very near future. But to be honest, the most dangerous threats of the world are completely man-made. Despite social media sites banning people and censoring anyone who mentions it, authorities are now being forced to recognize that COVID was almost certainly leaked from a laboratory. With genetic tampering technology getting more and more advanced, the next viral weapon outbreak would be so much worse. This might be the most dangerous thing to humanity. 
Already, scientists and labs have made things like mousepox, a man-made disease that killed almost 100% of mice it was tested on. Something like this leaking out of a laboratory could almost certainly wipe out entire populations. But already natural diseases are again so much more dangerous. Because of how many antibiotics are thrown at people and livestock, bacterial resistance to them has drastically increased. These superbugs are becoming impervious to modern medicine, meaning we could easily see the return of diseases like tuberculosis, cholera, and even the plague. And for reference, the Black Death killed 30 to 50% of Europe when it took hold. And so, if you take into consideration the idea of mousepox and these new superbugs, an engineered disease in our ultra globalized world could be incredibly devastating, which is why by at least 2090, it will be very possible for rogue organizations and terrorists to develop these kinds of weapons, which is undoubtedly the biggest existential threat for humankind. And so, with all of these things in mind, it would be a miracle if the world escapes without a major conflict in the next 100 years. But as we all know, it's very likely that we will see one in this next century. Now, previous wars always led to millions of deaths, but with the destructive power of over a century of weapons development, the next total world war will be a lot worse. Now, a nuclear war might not end humanity or even civilization as a whole, but it could have an awful effect on the population, and the resulting nuclear winter might kill more people than the conflict itself. Years or even decades of a blackened atmosphere and radiation would destroy the agricultural system, meaning the world simply just wouldn't be able to sustain a large population. Not to mention wiping out entire cities across the world, the energy grid would turn off, the water would be poisoned, and this would be the most likely way that the world population would dramatically fall. 